You've been doing a lot of programming for uh, Mac. You learned Mac, haven't you? Actually, no. Only one thing. The Just one? InfoData oh. gadget. Class. What's it called? InfoData. InfoData. Okay. okay. Good template. It's more just a, <laughs> a box to present data with. Yeah. It's meant to change rapidly, not be a list browser per se, but each line can be its own custom yeah. font, color. That's what you did last year. Yeah. Right. See? Made a few more changes to it. But the best thing about that one is you can make it borderless, you can make it one line, like down at the bottom there at the very toolbar. Those are like six, seven, eight individual info data gadgets. Oh. Gadgets. So you can change them really super fast, quick, and easy. Control each one separately. Just a this guy is down here. Right? Not, no, not the icons. Not the individual uh, things. Oh, here. Here. These little the base boxes. The baseline. Is an info data gadget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Those are info data gadgets. Yeah. So, so what do they do as opposed to just putting text on the data? Nothing. Just a quick, fast, easy way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. Like I know. Can you change put it? text there? Or? Yeah, but you got any GUI on this. I know. I mean, you can put text in the layout. No, you need what? You need a, a way to display. Way to display. A layout doesn't Some sort of gadget way. class has to be a You know, I mean, but within a get layout, when you do the layout of the gadgets within the oh, you you window, window, you, know, you just put text there and automatically you put it down there and then place and put it. Layout, no. 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 You have to make another object. Input it. It's going to be dynamic, so it flows. You just yeah. put a text that X, Y is going to stay there. Right, right. But you know, open up a window. Text is part of those gadgets. Yeah. Classes. Okay. They're in there. The class of some sort. Tied to the, the gadget. Right. Go to the main groups. It was list browser. It's all in the list browser. Uh, each button is like text. Uh, each string has like text. It controls it. It tells it where to put it. By you. Left, right, up, down. You can define a color for it. It's not just Print text here. This is my class. Be a board button. And this, this text here. That's the whole, that's the layout class. Right. So, but I mean, that text right there is, comes from what? Which gadget is that tied to? Well, this is a UI, but it's. You know, this is reaction. This is not, this is reaction. And it's part of the layout class. So a layout class, you can put in text, but it controls it. It's not just no. No, it's probably a button gadget internally. Right. Yeah. So it, well, layout has. I'm no, in GUI press. Yeah. Okay. Not a, layout has no uh, no visual representation at all. Right. 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 I know, but I thought the things that it, that were in it, you could put text in, like, in the layout gadget. You no, know, you have within the, object. within the and text object within the in layout. Yeah, there's no text object. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I wonder. Like, what are these things here? Where it says, you know, a print yeah. appearance properties, basic frame look. These these labels right here that are in there. Yeah. They're being controlled by the gadget. So, which gadget? Uh, whatever one it is. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, like underneath the which you're saying that text right there this is part of this box. gadget. This, it's, yeah. it's like a box. It's being controlled by that text. I know. But where is that text? What is what is that text? It's part of the layout gadget class. So you're you saying part, the text say is part of the layout. Big this group, that text oh, right this. And then the, that the, layout the, class. Right. Oh, so what's it called? Couldn't that, that text at the bottom be part of the group that, that is in that window that contains all those other gadgets? Frame? Frame? Could be equal to then you use to control the flow of the layout. So well, maybe it's a border image. Place the layout here, you grab hold of the window, but like. Plays itself out. We'll grab hold of your window and it plays itself out, right? Okay, oh, yeah. Uh, groups. Right, if you're doing that anyway. Right? You don't play that. 
<laughs> oh, I don't, even get, I don't get your question. Well, I'm just saying, you well, see text in Windows all the time. I didn't. I'm not that text error that, that was impossible. Text, that text error kind of get all fast being right there. Oh, the way that's within the text like guess. Us. Right. This is not uh, no, I am printing that text manually. Uh, that's a, a oh, that's not an improper gadget. I mean, oh. a gadget. Yeah. 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 I'm going to set a framework, though, of that box. I don't remember what it is. It might be size. 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 Oh, seven years ago, <clears throat> I was using WinUAE. Never had a good text editor in Amiga OS besides Notepad or what have you. So I would program on my Windows machine, my favorite editor, Edit Plus, okay. FTP it over to my Amiga to compile it. Well, that's very slow and tedious if you have a one little bug or typo or what have you. It slowed down development quite a bit. Imagine. Uh, found CodeBench. Really like it. But it is such a large program to load and get started. I did a time once to load Workbench Explorer from clicking the icon to getting to a edible page it took 45 seconds. So if the computer crashes, I'm a typo. Yeah, bring it back up, hit code bench, 10 second delay, load the dictionary, load every file of the, the project, click the one you want to open the editor, it's 45 seconds. That's way too long. You want to keep moving. So, I decided to start my own. Well, I had no, word of, no idea where to start at. So I had to scour the internet for code examples. <clears throat> I tried to convert the MUI MCC gadget class, or text gadget class, but that had so much inner MUI stuff in there I couldn't rip it apart enough to separate it. It got close, but then like that five to my hands. <laughs> couldn't figure it out. Uh, the reaction gadget class, text gadget class, is not advanced enough. It's slow, tedious. But I found, since you don't have ownership per se of the gadget class itself, if you do something in the gadget, it doesn't react to what's outside the window and vice versa. Like you can't, like Jamie's finding out in his file, it's not tied to your menus, it's not tied to your button bar, it's not tied to anything. They don't interact. So you can't add your own keyboard shortcuts, you can't add anything. This was already in the gadget class. Well, I love keyboard shortcuts, so I want to add a lot more. So I started my own. Uh, again, I know where you know how to start, so I can just search the internet. I found a very generic Linux based one that was also Windows compatible. Tore it apart. It wasn't very complicated as far as just the plain editing was. Uh, to copy some stuff from the MCC gadget class, how to, how to highlight the text. That was easy. Just jam one, jam two. Didn't know that. Uh, but now, I'm trying to get it to a point where I can just program on my Amiga and not have to use any of it. To get to that point, I needed toolbars and such and larger menus and four shortcuts. None of that came with the other program, of course. It's it wasn't written for it, it wasn't written for a full text there. It was just, here's an example of how to get started, run with it. So I did. And if I wanted to make sure you could do actual projects with it, not just load one text file and go. Now that problem I ran into was how do you load 50 source code files show it. Also you can't have 50 tabs opened up here. It would be monstrous. Couldn't fit 50 tabs. I had to come up with a 
this browser here to show all the files. So my ability is to load all these files here. It shows them over here. So this one's been edited. It's the first one I was blank one. You just pick the file and switches. Much more compact than having tabs. Because in Workbench Explorer, I think there's 230 source code files, I think it is now, or two. So you can't have three, three tabs, you have rows and rows and rows of tabs, and you lose your editing space. So I did this. Very visual studio. That's <laughs> the way it's efficient enough to do it, yeah. I mean, you're visual. Hmm. <coughs> and it's fast loading. Cool. They just loaded however many hundred of files it was. You can grow each one individually. So you know, then I got to the point, I had one problem with this. I can't find there's a bug in there, so I don't want to do it the normal way. Well, I got a lot of my file manually, so I started projects. And I, here's the files belong to this cat class. I wanted to do, like in Merbench Explorer, I don't need to load 230 files every time, but I want to file this there to make it simple and figure them out. I go up, pick it in the data class, it does load them all. ID. There's my classes. Files we got buttons. But so there's a bug there, I haven't fixed yet. Workbench Explorer is huge. So I only load four files. There's four right here. It's got startup. I don't need to load all these other files until I need to actually work on it. Do pick the project, scans them all, gets it ready. Now these are just kind of ghosted. These are, they know they're there, but they're not loaded yet. These here are loaded. But to make it simple, just pick it, then it loads it. Now it's, so your file list is there, you're not using the memory, you're not losing any speed, you're not wasting time loading everything. While well, you saw the progress bar, was it just and the scanning the file yep. list to <coughs> see whether you load or not load? It didn't actually load it. So, essentially, it was super fast. There so, it just loaded 200 files. References to 200 files. Right. Debating on being able to hide this panel or not. You know, just one little extra space here, but to me it's like, eh, you want it open all the time. You can switch it back and forth a lot. So why not leave it open? So what's that gadget in the middle that displays the source code? That's just a empty box, space gadget. Oh, that's a, your custom so, stuff. So for Paul, that is actually just printing text. Not a gadget class. And then you have added the scroll bars to right. control. So there's no, this is not a gadget class. This is an entire program. It's all tied together. It's not separated out. You could have asked to do that way, but it's like, eh. Couldn't cut and paste the text. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's all the very basic features. Some uh, text highlighting. Yep. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get that from? Mm -hmm. That was already in it. I didn't like it because it's very old. Oh, oh, it was already part of that uh, right. code, you, code base you, you grabbed. Huh? But the problem I'm running into is let's see if I can find one. all the new text editors use regular expressions to find it. This uses like old school pattern matching. Well, if you have weird 
word commands that might confuse me with something else. Yeah. Uh, not even recognize it. And then the hard way was the list of the commands and functions has to be reversed alphabetical order. <laughs> really? Because if you have int, int 8, int 16, int 32, it always finds the int first. Yeah. Uh, and not high at 32, 16, or whatever, because it doesn't go that far. It stops. Just to reverse it, right. it. Oh, 64, 32. Here's the plain int, or whatever. That was tough to figure out. Why is it not worth it? Days on that. If I turn it around, it works just fine. I never used it before until like last year. The jump to functions over here. But you have to double click. Yeah. But on that side, you just single click. Right. This one is the only quick change. And that makes these not loadable, if you want to call it, I guess. It's like a turn gray. <coughs> black. So that one is actually a sort of an alternative to having a small tap. Right. You have that many files open, that many tabs, no way you can be able to display that no. nicely. You need two or three, four rows of tabs to make it still readable. And the reaction class had a drop down arrow over here, you can click and get the list down, but plus the pointer, now it's hidden. It's this way, they're all visible. Quick change. Uh, this over here is just a quick, easy way to enter custom characters from your app. Mm -hmm. It was just there for completeness. I never hardly ever use it, but figure it out. These guys that use foreign characters might find it handy. Uh, there was no toolbar to build this in. Right now, though, I'm having a problem with it. Every button I click, Things is button seven because <laughs> obviously because this <laughs> wants to grab all the signals before it does it have it to the gadget classes. <sighs> so do you, you you probably want to use either speed bar or enhancer? Those are speed bars. Well, oh, yeah. well they don't have them all yet and they're not complete. So it's like <sighs> oh, I do. If I can figure out how to let this have the code back to here, kind of stuff. Doesn't the propagation of the messages follow the, prop the class structure of the window? I don't remember. No, <laughs> no maybe. Is, what I'm like, wondering is if this was in a space gadget and it's further down the tree that makes up the window, and the space, the buttons were higher in that tree. Well, shouldn't true. they get to them first? Kind of reverse, because what this is listening for is just mouse move, right. button click, whatever. These are actually the gadgets, and this is, see if it finds it. I'm going to print this phone now. That's over here. Ask me again, I'm going to print this phone. No, I always get the same code, because this is taking priority over top of these gadgets. <laughs> I can't quite figure out why. I suppose the venues work. Yeah. This will be a, a ruler eventually. It's the start of a ruler. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I didn't figure out how to make it scroll yet with the text and such and the sideways here. Do you have a line that long in the uh, No, I've determined how to create It's those. easier to make it huge right from the get go or try and call the longest line. Right. It's always measuring, it's always compensating. Is re scaling it right. as you take more cycles that way and slows things down a little bit. Kind of compared him with the uh, Jamie's text editor, the code bench, and some win regular windows want to do the same thing. You can kind of see it, just a little perk as you make the line longer, it's pretty fresh that button, the slider gadget. It's just a little annoying quirk, I guess. If you have a huge long file where it's a uh, good example of the can read this. Like 
this preferences file. This is 11,000 lines long. If you were to keep measuring moves along this line to make this scroll bar compensate, you're going to slow things down. Five. I'll tweak this a little bit more, make this a little larger or something so you can grab it easier. Uh, it's don't you scroll sideways very often, so the lines aren't that long. Could prop do something for you. Like it's funny you think that line length is going to get that much longer relative to most of the other lines in the set. Usually right. they're all about the same length. Right. So you say, okay, in group in five character increments or something like that, you add it and say, okay, longest line is 80 characters. Set it, set this width for 80. Somebody does 83, now make it 85. Mm -hmm. You know, and then at least you're giving it brackets. So you don't have to adjust as much every time somebody does one more character. Right. Or maybe 10 character instrument in right. increments. But you have no sense then for the length of <laughs> Right. Again, it's not not there or anything for me right now. Yeah. But I'm still stuck at some of the very basic things. You know, how's you can do your basic copy and paste? You know. uh, I've been working on mostly since the last time I showed this at Aaron's was the menus. Uh, all the shortcut keys here would not be in an average typical gadget class as a text editor. To make your own and make it complete, you have to keep it separate. If you're in the GAD class typing, you hit your custom shortcut key, you won't register. You have to click out of the GAD class, then you can hit it. So if you be all into one, under full control, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want, your shortcut keys. I try to cover all the very basic functions everybody's going to need. I looked at five different text editors and just took the most common, most popular functions out and sure kind of covered all the bases. Uh, you can hide all of these here, all these button bars. This is your basic cut, copy, paste, print. This bar here is all HTML functions if you're doing a web page, otherwise you can hide that full bar. These here are your user buttons, your tool buttons you can customize. I haven't got that far yet, the preferences editor. It's not even, doesn't even exist yet. Uh, it'll be just something if you want. It's there for completeness. One thing I added though is color schemes. Hmm. Okay, for change on the fly. Again, kind of stole some of these from uh, the context editor. The most top ten of their column. It's like the stuff from uh, the Virginia. Right. I think. Like, let's see. Glad work from them. Uh, that one from them. These are from Ultra Edit. And this is from Buzz App. We can start with. You can make your own down the road. I have full control of the XML so you can make your own. I'll be in the preferences page. I'm going to start it again. The macros. I kind of hit and miss right now. I'm not going to touch it. It'll crash. <laughs> uh, They're just a Rex or are they something else? No, these are actual keyboard macros. You record your keyboard oh, presses. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah. <coughs> These here could be yeah, turned into that. I showed up script. I can launch your script from here. Kind of launch program. Uh, something else kind of unique. How do you handle a line ending ending? End of line? Uh, Amiga. PC and the rest of the world. 
Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was in the default order for Windows machines, obviously, so I just put it that way. So I know Good you're, in, you're writing an Amiga program. When you have Amiga, you want Spec. Good idea. Should it can be changed? Not localized yet. <coughs> Speaking you know of the development. Amiga specifics, you don't use uh, Amiga <coughs> shortcuts in the main rules. I've taken so far a mix. So there's some there. Well, there are some, yes. But for the real complicated ones, like uh, Control Shift yeah. W, what do you want to do? I mean, well, Shift W, or, you know, it's like. No. Uh, that's, yeah, it's. No, I agree. You, there I'm would trying be to enough of you to play everything, but I was thinking of the basic ones, the uh, uh, right open, ones. Right open. Yeah. yeah. Good. There's a few basic ones there, but the rest, yeah, are getting a little more involved. Yeah. Multi key and so they're mostly what you find on Windows or Linux machine, you know, not using the key so much. You have line numbers and without? You want? With and without line numbers? Yes, you can take them off. Yeah. So you have line numbers on. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't activated it yet in the menu, so yeah, I can change the mainly in the press file, but I haven't got that far yet. Activating everything in the menu, so this toolbar, the code. Most of these shortcut keys aren't functional yet. I'm trying to make an easy way to tie them into the macros, into the menus, into everything, so I hit you hit this button, it will actually act as the menu item being clicked because macros record menu clicks better than button clicks for some reason. So, you say you hit this button, actually it calls a little function, the same thing that menu calls, just to make it simple. That way when I'm doing things once, so three times. If you record a macro, and I hit this button, do a little thing, come back here, pick this menu, do a little thing, uh, do a keyboard shortcut. Well, I've done the same thing three different ways. Macro, we really care, but to make it simple, it all be the same. Same function, you know, copy, paste. If you do it through the menu, there's a menu paste. If you do it through here, there's a toolbar paste. You know, it's got to know where to look each time. I'm trying to cheat it and call one function for all three. That way, the menu, toolbar, and keyboard shortcuts all look the same to the macros. If you go in there and manually edit it, it'll look the same to you too. A lot easier to tweak. Preferences editor, um, but that's going to be pretty complex too. How many buttons are you going to put in there? A lot. There'll be pages. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm just lore. That's why I'm kind of doing it last because I've, I've taken things, removed things, changed things. It's like if I do it now, I can change it in the preferences editor too. So I'm just wait to the very end, get it done, make it. Just... And maybe you want to just make preferences to the general large choices. Right. They also want it to be pretty customizable, like in Perfect Explorer, once everything is an option. Yeah. I would like it to be that way here too. So. That's your that's gonna be your signature. All right. That's right. definitely you. All right. I prefer it that way. It's like sure you can go up here and turn it off in the menu. I don't want to see word wrap or do word wrap or see the uh, line numbers. That would be like a temporary thing. And the preferences I want to check line numbers, and yeah, it's permanent. I want to just trim off real quick, come up here, turn off line numbers, but right now it's inactive. Why would you turn off line numbers? <laughs> You're setting plain text or whatever. So. 
Oh, okay. Not a source code file. Right. Actually, yeah. in the legal file, we want numbers too. Line numbers we can write. Right. Line, you know, document page four, line twenty-eight. We always do that. Did you, 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 I know you're, you're thinking more of a program than again, but it, it, uh, as an editor, a company in the legal profession would want the line number, so it just that another a a extra for some of you. Right, but they wouldn't be there think in the actual your, text file. They wouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. Think of having to make a readme file for, for your program. Mm -hmm. You didn't want that to be yeah, the well, Yeah, but I don't right. do readmes. I do right. line documents. Mm -hmm. right. You want the line number to stay there permanently. This is just a visual. It's yeah. not part yeah, of the document. Yeah, part of the document. Part of the document. Right. No, I, want that, I would want that as part of the document. Right. You need that to be type one. Mm -hmm. You'd want a word processor, not a text editor. Yeah. Right. This is a program. Yeah. Right. This word is, processor. I mean, you don't have line wrapping, obviously. It's, a thing. it's in there. It doesn't work very well, but it's in there. Really? I mean, but if you, so if you set a length, it'll automatically jump to the next line like a word processor. The problem I've had so far. These line numbers weren't in the original program either. I've added them. When you have a long line of wraps, I haven't got to skip the <laughs> line lines. numbers. Oh. So. <laughs> that would be fun. Uh, oh, it's like I, I was in the end, this that. after the fact. <laughs> so, so. Obviously, it's still the same line. It's maybe on six different lines, but it's still line one. You probably also have a challenge uh, with the uh, indented text. And wrapping right. to a line under that yeah. indent. Word wrap would turn off more things out of the text editor. So it's almost like, why did you even hear it? Because it's meant to be a programmer text editor. Again, I just put it in there, try it. It wasn't hard until I added line numbers. It's there. Uh -huh. Right there. That made it more complex. So it's kind of off at 80. You know, whatever it is, I haven't set to that or not. So that, that line, 16, should be down here. And this should be blank because it's part of line 15, technically. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. The, in other words, the line graphics don't actually happen in that spot. It's only happening on the screen. On the screen. Right. Okay. Which, again, isn't what you want. This is a word processor. You're right. This is a yeah, 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 yeah. I just kind of threw it in there. It wasn't a Howard, you know. You just. But you're not trying to do a word processor. Right. right. You don't want to just quick edit a text file, a review file. That is 80. If somebody actually looked at it in anything else, that line would continue right. right on. Yeah. yeah, still normal. There's no hard line break there. Right. There's the on screen. So. Always put a different symbol in the numbers. Instead of the 16, put a little, put a, uh, a little blue mic on there or something that tells the user it's part of the line. How does Simon handle it? He doesn't. You keep tipping off the side. He, just he doesn't do work at all. That I've ever seen. I don't think so. Yeah. And to the editor for projects, this took a long time. So like I was explaining earlier, Project Explorer has you know, 200 and some files. You don't want to load all those at once. Turn them all off and on if you want. I'll only load the first four. If I use it every time, or if I change a lot, I make a change when I quick add it in there, so I'll always want to load it. They don't load everything at once, it's small. So I have to do quick test loads. The text editor, I know, has to parse through these files to generate that list of functions. Is there any way of um, doing yes. the same thing for like structure uh, declarations? We could. That's harder. This actually uses uh, pattern matching again. It's got to be able to say, is there a parenthesis at the beginning and the end that blows? Right. No semicolon at the end. Is it you know, no? It's not a function line. Is it? And I assume those aren't dynamic, right? You have to regenerate them. 
So if I'm declaring a new function, it's not going to bring up this button. Right. right. One thing I did add was this here, the sort button. That's nice. So if you just need the name real quick, you know where it's at, and you just put it in. I'm sort it back to the true order. That's what you need. You don't know where it's at. In relation to your file, you know the name of it, you see that you're sorted. Mm -hmm. Customizable to either just inserting text, you know, the, the repeat text, um, launch a program with it, you could tell it to compile your program with it, you know, just launch GCC to make file. Nowhere near being done yet. Macros are close, just a few tweaks. That support for 10, as I've learned. Making this, that it's, I use I4 a lot. I'll probably never use them again, but I was writing this for the, uh, let me show you here, for all the languages I support. Is that HTML5 or 4 or 5? And like, so if you're in here and it thinks it's a C file, but it's not, you can come up here. Let's see where I'm at. I can only tell it, no, I'm going to send this file. It'll reload and change with highlighting, or didn't be much there, obviously. So, so this is what I support. Whoa! Well, I just loaded it twice. <laughs> That's a loop. Cut that in half, or a third. So if I tell it to XML file, it does what it can, obviously, it's not. Hmm. I run into another problem with uh, C sharp and plain C files. It's overlap. So you need to tell it on a C sharp file or on just a regular plain C file you can. I don't like building that list longer. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, it's uh, not clearing it. <laughs> no pet plus seems to distinguish. Uh, you might be able to uh, look up some tricks in the definition files. Right, like when I. Do, you can say, let's make it a Perl file. You know, is it, it case sensitive, yes or no? How to start a comment line, and the comment line, what the quotes are. And you can go in and say, here's the file extension. If it has a style extension, you know, it's, a, it's a Perl file. Or I can say, it has to have a certain text in it. So a good example of that. XML has to have open parentheses dot question mark XML right here. And how this does recognize it's an XML file, or it can be the file extension or or or. So that helps in some cases, but in a C file, that's near impossible. So you C sharp, C plus plus, and you plain C. Obviously, you can say here's all your 
<clears throat> my uh, category. You can let data types figure it out too. The data types can try to figure it out too sometimes. But they're sometimes. Slow. They're slow, yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do here soon is get it out to my beta tester, Javier, to read last, get it going on it, get some ideas, and I hope to release it here to a few more testers and get some ideas. But as of right now, I'm kind of stuck in the shortcuts, how to move all in one easy, cohesive method. Uh, the toolbar is not reacting nicely with this. This steals the mouse clicks before the added class gets it, it seems like. So I have a problem with that. I rearranged it in the code how to you know what order of process the signals. Didn't help. Uh, this little bar here is non functional. All it's going to be though is inserting text, you know, insert a ruler, insert a table text, you know the cursor back to where it belongs to start it. Like I didn't know how easy it was to print text files. I had a printer for my Amiga that just sent to the PRT ones, whatever it's called, the base printer for it. So you just it. Are you planning on releasing this um, as a commercial uh, tool or no, as I've learned that I would rather have it out there and be used than not being used. That makes sense. Sure. Like how Record Explorer is free, is free, always will be free. I've gotten donations, still get some once in a while. It must have been a year and a half, two years now since they released. Still appreciate it and use it. I have it being used and not being used. It's, if it's 30 bucks, I'm, like, oh, I'm not going to try it for 30 bucks. I'm not going to do that. You know, I'll use Notepad even though it sucks. It's free. So. And we're still that way. <laughs> so maybe five. Programmers are cheap, though. <laughs> they are, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them are poor. <laughs> And Most of us are poor. Most of us are poor. Oh, another thing I've had a problem. I, I could buy copies uh, for all my friends. Buy even me? Yeah. Whoa. One <laughs> <laughs> thing I had to update was to find and replace, because obviously the original one was not multi file so I'm going to find this. Add myself a sprung through each file to find it and move on. Ooh, that's different. That was a little bit harder than I thought it would be. Got a little flag there. That means it's been changed. Oh, neat. That's your visual cue that it's yeah. edited. So. Yeah, some, some change colors. All right. Show a little thing. Like this one's not loaded yet, that's the ghost of the, the huge file list. The dark black are loaded already, so that's not correct. So he's used, you use both techniques, taking the color and making the flag. Craig, you done. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be, I don't know, it's simpler because I could change this color easier and more mostly than changing this color. I want this to be ghost, obviously. Yeah. And so, make that blue, I want it to be yellow. So it's like what the situation is. But the find, I had a, it's still not perfect. If you start here, you just go down to the list, go back up to the top, it has to know where you started at to go to the end. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll just keep going. Mm -hmm. That was really hard to replace. And to replace, it's not quite there. Because it wants to run through twice uh, sometimes. So, like, 
that's just so incredibly complex. Mm -hmm. But they have just whipped it up. Yeah. I'll take eyeglass and, you know, make the. No, I don't. Boom. Mark, you, yes. you're, you're, it's incredibly complex. Are people going to use all those features or you just want to make sure they're there? This, to me, is pretty simple. It looks Yeah, complicated. but you've been building it, so you kind of know what's right. there. <coughs> I look at it and I can't remember what you told me two minutes ago. Case sensitive, you know, older, double year part of word. You know, it's not that bad, I think. No, I'm not. <laughs> So we're a programmer, I guess. <laughs> when you don't, when you don't, um, uh, when I don't select regular expression, mm -hmm. is it literally going to be the exact match whatever that string is? Right. That's, that's what it's going to do. Right. Or if you do whole word only, if you can't buy the best thing you've got right there is that thing that just to the right. Yeah, there you go, that guy. All open files. Yeah. You're able to make a global uh, replacements across the whole yeah. yeah. A bunch of, if I change one variable, yeah. if I change a member in a struct label or something, I'm going to go up there. That's awesome. What's the other thing changes. you might want to consider? Do you know uh, Notepad++ uh, how you can search for all occurrences in one go? And then he pops them up uh, in a small window. Right. The one that's in some cases I found that incredibly useful, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Codebench does that. Yeah. Oh, Codebench does it too. Okay. I think so. Then that like a little box that pops up, and you have to step to each one manually. If you want to jump to a certain one or something. That's not the great operating system. <coughs> <laughs> since, since there's all this language, it's like UTF. Actually, I asked about that on the forums. Both <laughs> said it's not worth it for a text. Yeah, you said it's a text. Right, because okay. if you got one, it's not fully supported in the OS Everybody at this level for right. the user. There you oh, go. Oh, you have a little summary. Yeah, like that. And then you can click here. And I do it HTML mostly, and so and so right. Very useful. Who's taking your domain? you use it for? I use UTF-8 for like foreign languages. Yes. Are you using it for? Okay. Yeah, I posted on one of the forums. They said, don't worry about it. It's not worth it to us. It's not complete in the OS. And it's going to make my job a lot harder, they said. Yeah. Like, get it done first. If you want to add later, you can, but it's not that critical. Yeah. So. Hey. Like, Mills, do you use F3 for next? Uh, yes, I often do because I've been using, uh, I've been programming a lot of uh, SQL, PL, PL SQL, and uh, I've used the uh, Joe right. as an editor. So. <laughs> so, like I was asking Jamie on his, you know, his is the one you get in, or mm -hmm. his is weird, right? Mm -hmm. Like you get H. I think well, uh, F3 is kind of becoming the universal standard. You stare. probably need to have them as alternatives. Right. Because it all depends on what you're used to using. Yeah, I don't like to like make H because when I think of control H, I think of place. Again, yeah. And a lot of old editors, right. that's what you did. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and I consider the cross platform we all read is best. We're old. Far as some type of here. So I'm not sure that's about it. And I'm mm -hmm. not fully sure you. I want to have a lot more done, obviously, but man, it's, it still looks pretty sweet. The internal working is a lot more than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> This all started with uh, some source different. code to uh, display it. Right. It's all started with some source code you found and display it. Uh, right, it was just, uh, a guy, it's called Sidron Text. Huh. The guy's name is like Jalen Sidron, it's part of his name, Sidra something. Was, yeah. I found it on like page 
40 you know, Google search, you know, it was just a small, here's an example text editor, how to get going. I've totally rewritten it. What's in the here now has been totally replaced with lots of Amiga code, updated the mobile files. So I think it was never supported. Uh, so. What could solve your speed bar thing? I had the same problem with the gamer rope, and you can't use space catch. You can't. Space catch is the problem. You have to use your own gadget class, make one up. Oh, mark, a, mark gadget. That's a civil right? And then you can make it an empty slate and you can do what you want. In right. It, but it's part of the reaction family. Right. And then it will steal uh, events and stuff like that. I thought that's how I solved it because I had similar problems. Well, yeah. I'll fill a check this uh, Urban Explorer using the toolbar just fine. I get the proper code every time. but. Here I'm not. I get the same code. But do you use space gadget though? I have to double check. That's the main the thing. Yeah, I, I found it behaved funny. Interface. Space gadget did some funny things. Um, but I like it because it, you can get the coordinates out. It's real quick and easy yeah. that I need. Dude, so I did the same thing. <laughs> but uh, really, you do have to use your own gadget, and then you have to do your own GM render. And really, right? I can make that to a button. It doesn't matter. I'm printing my own text, I'm not yeah. using the gadget class to print the text. So. Yeah, I know. I I know, but if you use the reaction yeah. framework, then things just poof, it works. Right. Yeah, and then you you become um, active gadget. Right? right? You can be the active one, and you can eat your mouse events, and you can eat keyboard events, and not interfere with other things. I think that's how I solved it, pretty sure. <laughs> the only problem was uh, figuring that out took a while. Right. Because you had to figure out the bare minimum that you want to support. Because there's so many methods, right? You know, all those GM right. extent, GM right. this, GM that, GM that. Which ones do you do? You right? In there, so. right? And, right. And basically, I took my space gadget stuff, translated it into normal reaction entry points, just called the same functions. So it, did, it didn't matter in the end. <laughs> right. But I had to put that framework in there, and then it started working. I could have sworn I had to do that, just a tip, but maybe that's what you might have to do. about that. Something was grabbing those codes. And yeah, I, I think it was Space Gadget acting funny on me. It was eating events. Right. I could have sworn I was... I the button click, but the code is wrong. It's not giving me the right code. Yeah, it sounds so, so yeah, familiar. Button. I might be able to dig up my skeleton, send it to you, like the, the bare minimum GM methods you need. Just do those. Well, my data class has all that too. So. Okay, you already know how to. Yeah, you did that info data, didn't you? So that's a catch. Right. Oh. So I could, were I could just make that up. <coughs> the data gadget class, really. Yeah. This box. Yeah, so you maybe you already have a, a good skeleton. Right. There was a bare minimum of functions you support or methods. And then yep. it started working. So I remember having similar problems. Because I was trying to do hold the mouse button down and do this and it wouldn't work or something like that. Right. Uh, in the space. But everywhere else it worked, but not. Alright. I have that memory of doing it. It was like five years ago, so it's a little day. Alright, that's it for me. Otherwise any questions? No? When Just can we have it? <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks. Oh, okay. Shut <laughs> at, the end, at the end of Amulet. There you go. Oh yeah, free copies for everyone. Mm -hmm. Only at Amulet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Yeah.